in a back street in Leeds, the rehearsal studio of the Mekons. Mekon's singles released so far, one. Now, how, how much uh, did you make any money from the sale of the first single? They all laugh. <laughs> I want to know why. You say you always seem very confident. They laugh. It, we're it's such we a minimal sleep. amount. We don't exactly, um, we're not on the verge of retirement yet. <laughs> <laughs> 40 pounds. Yes. Is, is the, no, we made 100 pounds. <laughs> No, that's all, is it? Yes. Yeah. Why bother making a record in the first place? It's a key part of a key part of a career. It's the only one of the only ways we can get more money for gigs, more gigs, and more people listening to us. And I think kids want to actually go out to the shops yeah. and buy. I, mean, I don't think it's that. I think we, we like to make records, actually. You know, it's nice just to, have, to be able to sort of as a as a separate thing from playing on a yeah, stage completely. You know? yeah. We're separate trying to make thing. it a completely separate thing as well. But I mean, are you therefore making them for your own satisfaction? Then? I mean, no, that's, no, I, I, mean, think, I think a lot of the Mekons uh, <clears throat> fans do want to go out and buy a <laughs> product. Well, so, I, mean, it, I don't think we should cope with that necessarily, surely. We're just perpetuating a lot of things that we're not necessarily in favour of by just making another product. No, I just don't. I don't see who who we are to turn around and say we, no, we're not going to give you a single no. to buy. You. Well, there just there is the, there is the the problem though, which we we are beginning to forget about as well. That perhaps we'd rather they spent their money buying guitars and amplifiers yes. than records. Well, I mean, what problems do you have then, being based in Leeds rather than being based in London? People want to see groups, but they'll only come and see them in London. Like mm. if we ever wanted to approach a record company or a London agent or anything along those lines. It's a London gig. Tell me when you've yeah. got a London gig. Sham 69 can claim to have broken a few barriers on behalf of punk. They've made several appearances on Top of the Pops and If the Kids Are United reached the top ten. Sham 69 started on a small label, Step Forward. Now they've been taken up by Polydor. At the Reading Festival, we talked to lead singer Jim Percy. So ultimately you start out on a small label and you have to go to a big one in order to make any real impact. Well, you have to, in a certain sense, to borrow the money off of them to have enough money to go out and tour, to go out and hire the PA, to, to, to pay for the hotel. You know, and it's all borrowed money. I mean, if you don't do any good, you don't get no money. But if you're doing all right, I mean, if you're selling records, then you're paying back the, the money you borrowed in the first place. Yeah. Whereas on Step Forward, they could never lend us £2,000 to go out and do a tour. Yeah. Whereas so Polydor could lend us How's it going to end up, though? I mean, are you going to end up living in uh, Los Angeles no way. alongside Rod Stewart? No way. I mean, how's it, how's it going to end up, though? What do you, how do you see Sham 69 it ends up. What it ends up is, as soon as I'm not happy anymore about what I'm doing, then I'll just jack it in. Yeah, but they all say that, though, don't they, Jim? I'll Do they honest. all say that? Well, of course they I do. I don't know that about it, John. I mean, well, I'm, only, I'm only speaking about myself. No, I know, but I mean, how, 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 do you, how do you really think? I mean, if you go on being a successful as you The point, is like, this, the point is like this. The punk was dying until Sham 69 came along. Sham 69 came along and give life to punk. We give life to a lot of kids, right? We, get, we, we said to them, right, punk is not dead. Everybody was saying, punk is dead. It's in the graveyard. They've got yeah. one foot in the grave. We said, no, it's not got one, one foot in the grave. You've only got to look now. You've got Jilted John on top of the Pops. Yeah. You've got Susie, ben Susie and the Banshees playing played on Radio 1. You've got the Lurkers on top of the Pops. Yeah, They're all being given a chance now. Yeah. Whereas if Sham 69 hadn't said, right, we want to go on top of the Pops to, to prove that you're not going to sweep us under the carpet, you're not going to destroy us, it's far better going on top of the Pops and an old lady saying, oh, what's that? You know, they go like, you know, get him off. You're not watching him. And the little kids say, yeah, I want to watch him. You know, don't you switch it off. Then go on and say a programme like Revolver, stuck at 11.15 at night. So you go on top of the pops and there's kids from 10, right, to 15, that can't get in the gigs, can see it. But 11.15 on Revolver, they're not going to be able to see you because their mums are going to say, come on, son, off to bed. bedtime now. You know, or they're down at discotheques. Best of Alternative TV are a band led by Mark Perry, one of the original prophets of punk. I spent a 
Somewhere. If a band want to change a lot and keep changing their music and doing different things, I think it's a bad thing actually if you start getting on playlists and off the top of the pops and that. Yeah. I'd sort of turn it down, well I hope I would anyway. I hope yeah. I wouldn't get drawn into that. Where do you see, I mean, not just alternative television, but the bands that you, that you still have faith in and the bands that you record, I mean, where would you, what would you like them to be doing in a couple of years' time? I'd like them to um, be still independent and independently be able to put out albums quite easily. That's, I mean, see, I can't speak for all, band, all of the bands because, I mean, what has happened to a few of our bands, like Sham 69, we, you know, when we first met them, well, they were nothing, you know, we put out a record, Polydor interested, and now they're on Polydor. I mean, individual bands do want to go and be signed up. I always advise against it. I always say, oh, no, lads, you know, stick with us. Mm -hmm. I felt quite lost when the Clash signed to CBS because I thought, surely, especially when I started doing it myself, we stepped forward, like, with help, obviously financial help. I thought, surely if I could have done it, the Clash could have done it, you know, as, as easy. Yeah, but why did you decide to do Step Forward then? Because, uh, I mean, we, I, I was into bands like Chelsea, the Cortinas, which we first signed. And I wanted, a, I wanted to help them in a way where I don't, didn't think a big record company could, you know. You know, the, if you want to speak to the art department in Polydor, you have to phone like two floors up, and yeah. you know what I mean? He's always a guy who's been to college and that, he knows he's, you know what I mean? On the other hand, of course, you could say that the bands are signed to the big record companies are now getting more attention and getting more money as well. I mean, I realise oh, they're getting... Yeah, uh, possibly, yeah, but um, I'm, I'm always surprised. I mean, I saw a Buzzcocks um, news story the other day in Sounds, and it says the Buzzcocks are trying their best to keep the ticket prices to a min minimum of £2.50. Yeah. And that, to me, is outrageous. I mean, we've done, like, a month of gigs for nothing. And yeah. if we can do it, like ATV, like... We haven't been signed up with no big money. If we can do it, they can. It just, I mean, £2.50, you know, it's, that's nothing to do with punk to me, you know. First of all, why haven't the Slits made any records yet? We haven't felt ready to make any records yet. When will you feel ready to make records? We're only going to say now. I mean, what... <laughs> now! Yeah. Well, I mean, what aspect of what you do do you feel is not ready? Think the songs aren't good enough? Tell us technically. Yeah? The songs are okay. Is that very important to do? Yeah. Yeah, but because we can imagine them, but the people can't. <laughs> we know what it's supposed to sound like, but it's not. Oh, we don't want to listen to horrible records. We make records. We want to make a record that sounds great. You know that we yeah. think a record should sound like, which isn't like loads of mistakes and. Well, I mean, are you are you looking for a lot of money then, or would you sign with a small record company with people who couldn't afford to give you a big advance? <laughs> so, I don't know. No. It's mm -hmm. not only the money who matters. Yeah. I mean, we're trying to get as much as possible. Like all, around, really money. all around as much as possible. Money, freedom. You know, we want to like the record company. Everything. We don't want to be against the record company. It'd be great if we get on okay. I don't know if that's naive. But I mean, you, so you don't, you don't feel... Really like the atmosphere of, you know... You don't feel any kind of... Uh, that's very good. You don't feel any kind... <laughs> 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 You don't, you don't feel any kind of, uh, as it were, political commitment to the small independent labels? No. No. You don't? No. <laughs> OK. Oh, I see. Uh, um, if, if you, if, have you been approached by uh, any major record companies or, or people, or yeah. any record companies? Right from the beginning we were approached, you know, like when we all used to stay around Harry's house and then um, they'd be signing up all the time for novelty type of records, one-off records. They wanted to record us, one company wanted to record us in one evening and get the LP out really quickly. Who was that? That was Ireland. I like Ireland. <clears throat> we liked Ireland, but we didn't like that idea. Um, you know, all that kind of thing was offered to us in the beginning. Well, what, what do you mean, all that kind of thing? Though? Well, that all kind of novelty approach. You know, you on the front of the record dressed in sort of very sophisticated dresses, all that kind of thing, um, but sounding really raw. But we want to make... A record that Elegant like pop. Yeah. As well, but it's so trendy. Well, if you if you had a successful record, then would you would you do top of the past? I mean, a lot of people have said they wouldn't. Would you go on top of the past and promote the record? Yes, yep. definitely. Yeah, I well, think so. <laughs> a lot of bands, a lot of bands say they wouldn't. I mean, uh, but you definitely would. You don't no, feel that you're compromising. Yeah, we just want to be seen. By we don't think we compromise by doing that. No. Anyway, if you we want could. to change the TV, then you have to go in everything. <laughs> In a basement in Gerrard Street, Gooseberry Studios, the UK subs and their first single. Okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Sound the wrong words. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get?
you go around all the major record companies? We went round to the only major we thought was any good was United Artists because you know they had the Buscock, Buscocks who we sort of think are pretty good and um, they sort of showed a bit of interest at first and they said well we're just not commercial enough mm. so that was that so we had a list of small like independents and we just sort of went down the list phoned up the first one we phoned up and they said yeah UK subs so that, that was it you know yeah. We didn't so, bother about any others, and they gave us a really good deal. Forty well, percent, and uh, complete artistic control. Right, yeah, well, and that's the, the main thing. Yeah. And what, what, what are the disadvantages of being on a small label? Um, we're going to remain poor for another two years, maybe. <laughs> but I mean, um, you know, we don't care. We, we're in it for the art, aren't we? But to what extent poor? I mean, how difficult is life going to be for you? We won't know until they start selling. It depends on how many they sell, really. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're not going to be like, you know, sort of a lot of other bands. They're, they're going to get a record out and um, they've got management and everything. It's going to buy them lots of nice equipment and they're going to go up and down the country and they're going to go out for, a, you know, maybe only a couple of hundred pounds and they're going to have all this gear. And it's going to cost them about 500 pounds to do a gig. Yeah. We're not going to do this. We, you know, we went down to Brighton the other day. We've done a gig for fourteen pound, and we lost two quid. Yes. So we're but again, this is gonna, dictated by circumstances. Of, um, well, yeah, but we're going to keep it that way. We're not going to get all this arty-farty, you know, loads of gear and that. We're just going to carry on as we are.